Elia Molano, and I design jewelry. And I have also been collecting artworks for a long time. I actually collected art together with my husband, Joe. So he has to like it, and when he buys something, I also have to like it. We have been very uh, selective with the pieces that we would buy. The painting has to be attractive enough or good enough for us to, to buy because we know that we will be having this for a long time. We like many artists' work, but we have favorites. And one of our favorites was uh, Ankyo Ko and Arturo Luz and H.R. Ocampo, Cesar de Gaspi, and many others. We like, we enjoy talking about it, we enjoy looking at it, and it's been that way until now. I still admire their works. Ankyo Koch's works did not appeal so much with so many people at that time because it was something very different. He was introduced to me by Tita Priscilla Chongyan, the late Priscilla Chongyan. She asked me to help this man uh, retrieve his documents from the immigration at the airport because when he came in, they confiscated some of his documents. So since Sita Priscilla knew that I knew some people at the airport, she asked me to help him. At that time, I didn't know that he was Ankyu Kok. I didn't even know he was a painter. I just helped him. I brought him to the airport and then we were able to clarify um, his, his situation and these um, immigration officers gave back his papers. All that my husband asked him to do was, please make me a waiting man. Because at that time, my husband was waiting for his um, uh, assignment uh, in the UN. So uh, that's what Ang produced. He, he one day brought it to our house and said, this is what I thought was the waiting man. The crucifixion was bought by my cousin from him, and then she passed it on to me. If you saw the crucifixion, it's so unusual. You just have to look at it very well, and then you'd see, oh yeah, this is Jesus Christ. The red burlap piece was really like my favorite. You know, I was at his house one afternoon, and he said that he was moving out of Ordaneta village, where he used to live. And uh, he said, I was moving out and, you know, I need to sell some of my works. So he told me, do you like this one? And he pointed that to me. And I said, yes, I like it, but maybe I cannot afford it. And he said, no, 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 I'll give you a discount. You can, you can have it. I like you to have it because this is the red burlap that I also like very much. And I like you to keep it. This is like from him to us, and I never parted with it until now. The uh, ochre-colored sculpture, I have two of those. I bought that, um, I think, Tessie's birthday. So I bought those two pieces, and I put them here in this side. Oh, I met Arturo Luz because he had this uh, Luz gallery. You know, he really exhibited excellent artists. One day, Arturo saw me wearing what I was working on, and he said, I like that necklace that you're wearing. And I told him I made it. And then he told me, your book. For what? I said, your book for an exhibit in my gallery. In the afternoon, sometimes I'd go visit him, spend the afternoon with him while he is painting. And then in the end, I choose something, something small, and I bring it home. <laughs> HR was one of the leaders of the Saturday group and HR would come visit us at home. The Bosquejo, we bought that from Nati and Sak Nugi. They were friends of my husband. Well, collectors should, today should study the pieces that they buy. They should not just depend on somebody authenticating it or make it very important to have a certificate of authentication because when they buy just something because of a name, because this artist is popular or saleable, then they don't really get to love the pieces. You have to be passionate about the pieces that you buy because it becomes part of you. 